Yeah, Linnea, press that second one, press it. Hi, Linnea, here we are again at Duthie, freezing while Simon is in Mexico, living it up in the sun. I did just get off the phone with him to talk to him a little bit about some, some key points for what we're gonna do today, which is? Steep face jumps. <laughs> so <laughs> so do, you, do you know what he said? No. Nothing different than regular jumps. So, <laughs> and it's true. And that's the great thing. So we're gonna talk about why and kind of go over it, but we're gonna talk about the difference between this lip and that steeper lip that they have on the side of this. They've built some like steeper faced lips on the edges of the jumps mm -hmm. if you wanna go a little higher. And so we're gonna talk about how to hit those mm -hmm. and how that changes the way you jump and, and what it does. Okay, maybe we could talk about the mental side too because I, I, it is funny he says, just you know do it the same way. But I think for a lot of people and myself, it is more of a mental game when the jump face is really steep. Because you feel like you're going to hit it and go up and then people have this, I've even seen it in how-to videos talking about getting back on the bike. Mm -hmm. That's a very advanced move. I won't say that I don't do it when you'll see me on double trouble, absolutely, but that's an advanced move and this is about how to jump these correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a solid base first. Let's just hit this, get warmed up and then we're going to go actually get some like truly steep faced lips. Okay. All right, let's do it. Cool. So I got a little thought for you, because okay. I noticed a couple times you're just clearing them. Think about pressing a little bit harder and holding a little bit longer. Really press into that lip for these, because we're not going real fast to get that extra pop. Okay. Um, is this all driven through my feet? Yes, we're pre all of our pressure is in our feet, and because we're, our knees are over our toes, mm -hmm. that's creating compression on both the fork and the rear, like this. So notice the whole bike compresses. If my knees are over my toes and I'm pressing forward and down into that lip, mm -hmm. everything compresses together and rebounds together, and then just make sure you're releasing as the back tire comes off the lip, not based off your front tire. So that was fun, got warmed up. You yeah. know, now let's go like really hit some steep face jumps that have the matching steep face landings. So here we are on a steep face jump. Yes. Um, for the size of this, it's a pretty steep face. So I haven't spent a lot of time on dirt jumps or steep face jumps. And I think what's happened to me historically when I've tried is I would, I would actually fall into this more of a drop technique because I was kind of scared. And so my hips would shift back to kind of absorb and squash that face. Mm -hmm. And it's never felt good, so uh, I, I kind of avoided it. Yeah, so this is gonna be the biggest thing people do wrong on these jumps, is the bigger and steeper they get, the more the confidence goes down because you see this big wall. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's even more important, like when we were talking about step downs, is the last thing in my head when I'm jumping a new jump is reminding myself that it's knees over the toes, pressing in to get even compression on the fork and the rear suspension, and having that compression and staying forward is the last thing I need to do because I know that's the proper technique and I know that will create the arc. Because this is all about energy and what you're mm -hmm. doing with the energy. So as soon as you shift your knees behind your toes at the lip of this jump, you've now taken the weight off the fork, it has less compression, which means less rebound, which means less height. So what happens is, as you come off, the front wheel's arc is here, but your rear, you've now put extra weight on it. Mm. And now it's had more energy, which it now needs to release. So it releases more energy. <laughs> so here's your front wheel arc, and here's your back wheel arc. Gotcha. And, and where that does that send you? that makes so much sense. So it sends you over the bars. So every time you see somebody, and you, you watch Friday Fells on Pink Bike, and people are constantly going over, all those mm -hmm. dead sailors are because at the last second, they reverted to getting back because they think it's safe. So what do you think, I'll do this once and then yeah. check it out and see if you want to do it. So what'd you think? Um, I am grateful that you did it at a slower speed so I could see kind of what I'm, I might be up against. Yeah. Cocktails. Oh, does water count? <laughs> okay, yeah, plenty of speed. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you landed like right at the top. Everything was good. 
you could have actually pressed a little more and, and went a little higher. Gotcha. Yeah, but you did a really good job. What I liked is I didn't see you try to squash it. Yeah, I'm really actually glad you talked me into this because this is not a line I've hit yet. And every time you get one new jump, it helps. Woo! Yeah. Uh, sorry for the sound effects. It's just. Why are you apologizing? <laughs> I just feel like. Uh, there's no apology needed for having fun. Isn't that the whole point of all this? <laughs> the woo is literally is, the point is to have fun. It's more like I like I'm surprised, you know. Let's it's keep like surprising a, you. A then. surprise woo. Woo! All right. Well, let's go down and check this other one out. Okay. All sounds right. good. Learn to ride steep tech for less than the price of Netflix at Fluid Ride Online. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I'm ready to jump. So you did a new jump again today I'm... that had a nice steep face lip. Yeah. So you want to do some bigger ones? Yeah. Let's go hit those bottom ones on Flying Squirrel. Those are straight, those are steep face, and they're, they're bigger. So what do you think? Yeah. Work our way up. You gotta get your knees and your hips into it. I don't even know what I'm doing. All right, okay. so we're on Flying Squirrel, yes. and we just skipped all that and came right down to the two big steep face jumps right. to have some fun and kind of finish this up. I think the key is um, until you can clear the first one and actually use the downslope speed, you're never gonna have the speed for the second one to actually press into it and completely clear it. But like I said, it has a nice safe case pad. So I would say if there's a goal of something you want to work on today is really how do we get the press on this first one and completely mm -hmm. clear it so we can use that momentum on the backside. So here's our first lip, which you can see has a beautiful lip and you can definitely press into it and, and get what you need to get over this jump. But the catch is we're coming out of a corner. So yeah, you can see this is all downhill. So I think really important to make sure by the time you get to there, you're at a speed that you know you can take this whole corner without touching your brakes and get rounded out and press into that lift. You came around that corner and you had the speed. And I think the good thing is you didn't get back because you were concerned of the size of it. Because you know, when you hit this big jump, you have a big arc and it's a big movement. And that's a change that you have to get used to going from mellower jumps that go across to now, when you create these tall jumps, you have this up and down, and that's a new feeling. So I think what's happening is you're coming into that and you're a little concerned about the pure size of it and the height you go before you come down, yeah. and you actually aren't pressing into it. You're soaking it up. <laughs> yeah. Because you know you can safely land up on that top area. Mm -hmm. So I just watched you go around that corner, I'm like, oh my God, she's gonna clear it, and then all of a sudden you just like <laughs> soaked it up. You actually didn't press into the lip. You still could press harder. I had to press harder? You could still press harder and you'd clear it better. But I think I just carried more speed through that corner. <laughs> so I'm watching this and I'm noticing one thing right here. You're still back, your knees are behind your toes. So mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of pressing, but you're kind of like giving up on it. And see there, you're really far mm -hmm. back. I'm sitting. So let's really focus on keeping our knees over our toes and letting that bike come up that lip and arc and come back down. Okay, cool. Yes, you're so close. Oh, so, so look at this. Now you're going in. See, you're almost over the toes. So you could let your arms bend a little more and let it come in, which would let you be forward. But look at how you're arcing now. And see mm -hmm. how the front wheel's actually coming down and lands first, and then the back wheel lands in the same spot. You barely tagged that. You know what I mean? Okay. Like just barely. So a little more press would get you a little more height. So there you are, your knees are still right there, you're really close. You know, see how your arms aren't getting pulled quite as straight and you're yeah. getting the arc and now your front end's coming down? Yeah. 
So you're fighting it, but you're giving it enough that you're getting the distance in the arc now. Got plenty of distance and on that one. And what's really cool is now you're not getting your speed killed on the backside and you can carry that into the next jump now. Yes. We did some steep face jumps today. We did, yeah. It was fun to get back on this because I'd only ridden it a couple times and I knew I wasn't riding it well. I knew I wasn't clearing them. So I kind of just set them aside for a long time. Uh -huh. So what do you see as being the big takeaways for today? Well, looking at the video really helped. So what I saw there was number one, not compressing too early, which we saw on this last jump mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, the biggest one, so number two is driving my knees forward and keeping my hips forward instead of doing this like fall back safety mechanism of trying to mm -hmm. move away from the jump. So moving toward the jump. Um, and then number three is just making sure I'm always holding compression so that my rear wheel holds compression to the lip of the jump. Yeah, I think you really hit the three key points. And the one I love is you talked about timing. And when you think about Think about how long, a, if you take that steep lip and you roll it out, how long it is. So your compression timing changes when you have a steep face jump because it's much quicker and steeper mm -hmm. than on a big, long, slow one. Thank you for meeting me and for all your help with all these jumps. And I look forward to doing some more jumping soon. You're welcome. Cool, see you then. All right.